Hello, Sentient Drones here. Today we've got the E011 from Eashin. This one's on stock transmitter. No camera attached. This one here, we've got the stock build flying on a FlySky receiver. The FXRX2A Pro. It's still running the stock battery, which is pretty easy to get in and out. Underneath, we've got Beside the mounted beside the receiver with easy access to the channel button is the VTX01S from Eashin. It's pretty much the perfect size to fit underneath the flight controller with the uh, antenna coming out the back here. The reason I've attached the canopy with three screws is because the flight controller originally is bolted down. I'll just show you that in one second. Because underneath here, we have a soft mount. Underneath this flight controller is holding together a double piece of mounting tape, double-sided piece of mounting tape holding together the receiver, the VTX, and the flight controller all cramped into the tiny little space that they give you for just a flight controller mount. Obviously, I've soldered the wires as there's no room anymore for those wonderful motor plugs that come stock on the build. Without them, that gives you enough room to mount the receiver and the VTX underneath instead of on top, giving a low profile build. The stock flight controller as I was mentioning earlier, is mounted with two screws, which seems to give the frame quite a bit of rigidity. As you can see with this one, it's got a lot more flex to it, which is why I added the screws in, which just makes it solid again with the canopy. So we're gonna prepare the stock E011 for modifications for the upgrade for the Acro flight controller with on-screen display, the FlySky receiver, and then the video transmitter. All to be placed nicely within the build. So I'll just take out the two screws holding in the stock flight controller. And it just pushes right out. Unplug the motor plugs. Remove the old flight controller. So there's a post in the way for the flight controller, video transmitter, and receiver to be able to all fit within this space. It's pretty soft plastic, so pretty much any scissors will do. Just remove it at the base. Doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to be gone. It's very easy to remove. Now this is the VTX 01S smallest 25 milliwatt video transmitter that I could find. I didn't like the stock 600 TVL camera that came with it. So this is the 700 TVL 170 degree frame of view camera. That's available on Banggood. I'll put links in the description. So I attached that instead. This is the FlySky FSRX2A Pro receiver, which is the smallest FlySky receiver I found available. It's good for about 300, 400 meters. I've tested it to that range. This is the real ACC version 1 flight controller with on-screen display. 
So I've wired up the video transmitter so the on-screen display will work. I've wired up the receiver. And the only thing we have left to solder onto this is the motors. So after removing the flight controller from this, we're just going to want to clip off at the very end these tiny little motor plugs. And then I'm just going to pre-tin the wire ends after I strip them, and then I'll show you how to put in the flight controller. I've got my wires pre-tinned, ready to install my flight controller, video transmitter, receiver, and camera, and buzzer. Buzzer's not really necessary, but I like it for being able to find it out in the grass. And it hides in there nicely with the build. So, with this, you're going to want the video transmitter mounted with the antenna at the back. The receiver mounted with the antenna out of one of the sides. I prefer this side as it makes it so the bind button is still nice and easy to access. So this is the front of the helicopter, this being the back, where we remove the post. So you just slide the antenna in through there, and then press the receiver in to the very bottom of there. It should sit really nicely along that bottom tray so that you can still see that you have access to your bind button and you also have access to the video uh, channel selection. Make sure that all our wires are separated. And then... So for my preference, I like the USB port to be out of the right side at the front, so I mount it just a few degrees clockwise, I'd say it's about 20, 20 degrees is the adjustment that I go for in the accelerometer in beta flight. And a little bit hard to get in there the first time. So that's how it's going to rest in once we have the motor wire soldered in and connected. So I've got my motors now attached to the flight controller. And it's ready to be put into place. So I just put the front in near the camera edges because it is stuck to that mounting tape. And then just manipulate it a little bit, put a little bit of pressure towards the back, and then put it under that duct. Give it a few firm presses with the bottom of the frame. So we can apply to that mounting tape well. And there, it's soft mounted. Just clean that wiring up a little bit. Put this buzzer right into the very back of the frame right here. So the flight controller I've set up with a previous build. I would suggest when you do it, because you have to tilt the flight controller slightly to get it access to the USB cable, that you just hold the quadcopter if you're doing it uh, calibration to the accelerometer 
just adjust for the slight amount of tilt that you have to add to get that to connect into the USB. Make sure your wires aren't in the way or getting pinched in between anything metal. So I've wrapped the antenna for the receiver just around to the top side of the build. I didn't poke a hole in the top or anything for it. I find it gets great range just um, being applied to the top as the whole build is made out of plastic. Now I'm ready to attach my camera. So with the camera, I use just a piece of mounting tape in behind as it makes it a lot easier to remove when you're ready to remove if you ever want to upgrade or change cameras. So I finished attaching my camera with hot glue. I used some on the top and some on the bottom. There's a piece of mounting tape in behind just to make it a little easier to remove. I mounted mine at about 10 degree angle up. I'm going to go ahead and say that's not enough for this powerful little beast of a tiny whoop. Uh, you'll see in the video I'm about to show you, it faces the ground if you go full speed. Uh, check it out. I'll add another video once I tilt the camera up a little further and see if that makes it better.
getting it to plug in can be a little bit tricky. The flight controller, USB. Um, not that it's tricky, but it pushes the duct down slightly and lifts up the flight controller. It's okay because it's kind of soft mounted. Um, getting it to calibrate for the accelerometer, you just want to adjust for the tilt. So for me, I hold it a little bit forward and a little bit to the right. Click accelerate. And at the end, it ends up looking slightly like that. As right now, it's being tilted backwards and to the right. Uh, so configuration to get the accelerometer to work properly if you are going to use If you are going to use a stability mode, you're going to want to adjust the board and sensor alignment. Yaw degrees, I did 335. So I figured that was about a 25 degree mount. I had to mount it to get the USB port in the position I liked. I had to mount it uh, counterclockwise, about 25 degrees. Here's how I set up my modes. And the PID tuning. You can also adjust your own green display. That's exactly how I like it. That's it. So this is my tiny whoop finished build. On screen display, 700 TVL camera. Still fits in nicely, the stock battery. 260 milliamp. Something that I find very useful about this is if you put your finger at the battery and over the top and squeeze, I don't know if you can hear it, but that changes the channels on the video transmitter for you. Very easy and simple. Thanks for watching.